a group of interviews, we label theory evolution. I mean, the theory of evolution is ultimately a theory of reproduction. You survive to reproduce. In our first interview, we have the world's leading bonobo researcher, Franz de Waal. He's a professor at Emory University. The bonobos are the monkeys who act as if they've read the joy of sex. The bonobos have um, sex at interesting moments, such as after a fight, as a reconciliation between two individuals, especially between females, that happens. They have sex when you introduce food. In captivity, when you give them food, that's actually the easiest way to get sexual behavior, and they use the sex to reduce tensions, and then they share the food afterwards. In the field, they report a lot of sex when bonobos enter a fruit tree, lots of food available, they have lots of sex, and then they eat the food without competition. So the sex sort of uh, irons out tensions that it may exist in relationships and makes it possible to share resources. Is this another form of altruism from an evolutionary function? It's interesting that bonobos, uh, when, they, when they have mutual sex, let's say two females do their famous GG rubbing, which is where, where they uh, have a, adopt a sort of mother-infant posture. The one female clings to the other female and they rub their swellings together in a very rapid rhythm, which, is, which are also the clitoris actually. So the clitoris is stimulated at that point. In that case, they have mutual pleasure. So we don't need to talk about altruism because both of them get something out of it. But what is interesting because you of, often see also individuals stimulate each other without the stimulator getting anything out of it. So you may have a female who approaches another one and uh, fingers her genitals just for a few seconds, but still something that she's doing to the other one. Or you have males who suck each other's penis or who stimulate each other's penis. And in that sort of cases, it's much harder to argue that both of them get pleasure out of it. And so you could call it altruistic or at least a sort of service provision of service there. People often think that sex means the same sort of sex as we have, which, which lasts a long time. But a lot of the bonobo sex is very short. Mm -hmm. It's like 10 seconds, sometimes less than 10 seconds. So it's a very brief encounter. And it's more similar maybe to, uh, in other primates, what is grooming. So I approach you and I groom you for whatever, ten, 10 minutes, which is a service that I provide to you. Usually you find that pleasant and we actually have measures of uh, heart rate. Your heart rate will go down tw while I groom you. And so I don't think that's fundamentally different from one bonobo approaching on another and giving some small genital stimulation. And so in bonobos it's very likely, but no one has studied that, but it's likely that this sexual stuff plays a role in some sort of service economy. It's like I do something for you, you do something for me. And so if I'm the dominant male and I stimulate you, your genitals, maybe that means you're going to be more supportive of me. This idea of animal sex is just for reproduction and human sex is something else, I think is nonsense because animal sex has all these social functions as well. So I think that's the most important message. And maybe another message from the bonobo that we should learn is that some of the evolutionary modeling that has taken place which emphasizes warfare and aggressiveness and male dominance and all of this is based on a set of assumptions that I don't necessarily agree with and I think the bonobo is one of those species that upsets that sort of scenarios and we will hear a lot more about them once they're taken seriously by some of the establishment.